Buenos dias, todos. Good morning and afternoon. Welcome to Colombia Wind Power Virtual 2020. Although we wish we could meet in person in Bogota once again this year, we are thrilled that so many people could join us virtually today and tomorrow for this industry event. My name is Emerson Clark, the Director of Growth and Partnerships at the Global Wind Energy Council, and I'll be your MC over the next two days, filled with high-level panel discussions, side events, technical breakout sessions, a virtual expo, networking, and much more. Hello, good morning, everyone. I usually speak Spanish with my colleagues from Colombia, but today we're going to be speaking in English because we have an international representation. We really have representation from all over the world and, and a strong representation from Colombia. And to keep myself connected, I have a small piece of the Colombian jungle right behind me. Finally, I would like to thank all the sponsors and supporters of Columbia Wind Power Virtual 2020 for making this event a reality and a huge success. Just quickly run through them for um, much appreciated to our platinum sponsor, Siemens Gamesa Renewable Energy. Our gold sponsor is the Nordex Group and UL. Silver sponsor, NL Green Power. Bronze sponsors, Enercon and Mainstream Renewable Power. And our important supporting sponsors, Vortex, Grupo Energia Bogota, Leosphere Vaisala, MECQ Energy, Ventus, and Safem. Supporting institutions cannot be forgotten, and we've got a really, really high level constellation here from IRENA, to the World's Bank, World Bank IFC, that's the International Finance Corporation, to um, the Colombian government um, ministry, UPME. We have ANLA, as well as the Ministry of Mines and Energy, the Ministry of Transport, Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development, along with Craig, and last but not least, our partner, OLADE. I will now hand it off to Ramon Fiestas, who is the chair of GOX Latin America Committee for the welcome address. And I look forward to seeing you over the next two days. Thank you so much for your kind presentation, Emerson. Well, we're going to be discussing is Spanish right now, our own language. If you do not know Spanish, you can use the application for you to be able just to have this simultaneous interpretation into, into English. So, if this is the very first time that you are here, I just I would like to let you know that this is a meeting, a gathering that is just conducted with the Global Wind Energy Council and CER Colombia, and also we are addressing our industry partners, stakeholders, and Colombian and international institutions with whom we intend to align our efforts from this sector sector for us to be able to achieve and meet the goals of this energy transformation. So right now, this is a very, th well, this is the third time that we have this Colombia wind power edition. We started in 2018. It started as an initiative, as an effort that is part of the Latin American comedy of GWEC. For us to be able to be part of this new view of this new energy policy in Colombia and for us to be able to make use of these non-renewable energies and for us to be able to just accelerate our agenda in this regard. So knowing that technology is key to all of this and sustainable, this is part of what we're taking into account because this is going to create synergies as well in, the, in Colombia, just like any other technology without this type of technology we would not be able to attain our goals and our main purpose is to fight climate change unfortunately well we have seen the worst part of this well recently we have seen some natural disasters in central america and also in the areas of san andres san provincia in colombia we have of course persons who have been attacked and damaged so, well, we would just like to tell you that we are with you. We hope that very soon everything can go back to normal and that you can go back to your places or, of origin as soon as possible because we know that Christmas is coming. Also, I wanted to tell you that we were going to have the Mining and Energy Ministry, Mr. Diego Mesa, but, well, he had to go to Providencia 
so he will try to join us tomorrow so it is not going to be possible for him to join us today well it was pretty much impossible for him to connect today so he apologizes we know that the islands are very damaged specifically in the surrounding areas and we know that communications are not the best there so we absolutely understand that he needs to focus his efforts as part of the Colombian public efforts as part of this situations in those areas that have been highly impacted on by these hurricanes like I've mentioned. So I also wanted to tell you that well this conference is now well taking part of one of other hosts that has been the uninvited guest, the unexpected guest. And well, we need to see the bright side in this. We need to take advantage of all of these new opportunities that we see from these remote interactions and that we have now included as part of this edition. We have now this platform that has enabled interaction just by creating this stage for discussion and this more advanced technology that we're going to see and that is going to enable these activities in Colombia. Our proposal included a set of panels for this year. This is mainly supported in technical sessions as well, where we're going to be addressing all types of technologies, highly specialized, highly technical, and that are now being supplemented by the attendance of our different companies that are our sponsors. So for that, we would like to thank you for joining us. And also we would like to invite you all to just visit all of these stands that we have from our sponsors so that you can actually just learn more about the contents and everything that we're going to be sharing here as part of everything that we are doing as part of this effort. We have also developed this agenda based on the main topics that are more significant for all of these activities that are being conducted in this area. On the one side, we have the sites of this energy agenda related to sustainability in the medium and long term where we see that this economic recovery and its impact on the energy transformation agenda is going to be part of our panel. We have national, international speakers as well. Then we're going to have this technical and economic regulations and everything that it entails. This is very important for this. In this case, this reform of this electric market and, well, this energization of these projects are going to be very important. We're going to have experts and operators that are very important, very distinguished in this regard. And then we're also going to focus on safety and security. We're, go we're going to be addressing good practices, environmental practices, social practices, and also in terms of logistics. We have also included bilateral acquisition of green energies as a dynamic for us to be able to contribute to all of this medium and long term procurement and purchasing of energy. And lastly, we also have, well, technology innovation that is also part of our in panel as well, we have Eolika Offshore that is going to be a panel where we're going to be able to get very valuable information for us to be able to take part in all of the keys of development of this activity that is taking place in Colombia. So uh, I just wanted to thank you everyone to acknowledge the efforts by the public administration from your own areas of work thank you so much for being always there thank you for addressing and meeting the needs of the particular circumstances where we are holding this event and also the ministry of mining and energy the deputy minister of sustainable development the general director of energy and electric power he is in san andres at this time the executive director and deputy manager of the energy planning department the executive director of the gas and energy commission and also the general director of uh, environmental permits the general director of transportation the general director of the ministry of interior and also the governor from Guajira, and also the director of political planning from the international agency and also the executive secretary of the OLADE or the Latin American Energy 
association and also the bank for just just taking part in our agenda and in this meeting as well. We just wanted to tell you that this remarkable set of speakers is just somehow underpinning the efforts that we have for us to be able to foster this electric industry in Colombia, which is key for us to be able to move forward with our different purposes through a robust leverage that we are using for us to be able to strengthen our economy in the country. We're going to deepen and broaden these topics related to this economic recovery, as we call it, the green economic recovery and this following COVID-19 crisis and uh, the significance of having this type of technology across the Latin American region, considering the capacity that we have because we have high investment and our capacities to develop and create jobs. So the wind power energy industry is also now reaching new levels. I can also anticipate and tell you that this year we're going to break the record of installed capacity of wind power ever since we got the first wind power turbine with over 5,000 megawatts already available in the region despite the different restrictions that we found because of this lockdown period even though we were having some issues and struggling with, with our services supply chain anyway we were able to manage this and as part of the most remarkable points that I would like to highlight here and that are the main let's say points that are to be spotlighted here as part of this investments conducted in Latin America and the most important one is competitiveness so even though we have just started the third Colombia Wind Power virtual edition in Bogota this time it's well possible because we have been able to have a good establishment of this competitiveness of this wind power facing other types of power that we may see across these electric power industries more particularly in the Colombian market without that competitiveness it would be absolutely impossible for us to be able to start just somehow even conceiving or forecasting such a growth in this wind power market as we have it right now in Colombia. When I talk about competitiveness, I know that this is one of the key points that are going to be present also as part of this conferences. And this is one of the main drivers that we're going to have right here as part of the Latin American region for us to be able to continue developing renewable energies across the whole region. So I would also like to mention that while this is a great piece of news, we also have certain challenges and restrictions that are quite significant and that somehow are just making us just double our efforts for us to be able to tear down all of these barriers and that we may be able to just really just continue on this path of having a more or highly scaled development as part of everything that we have been doing so far. And more particularly, I would like to address the need of just making a very comprehensive review of these electric power systems across the different electric power markets, not only in Colombia, but just overall. So this flexibility or the quest for this sustainability solutions in these electric power markets all over Latin America is perhaps the main challenge that we are facing and that we will continue to face specifically in this renewable energy in the region. So there is no question that this path towards this energy transformation is not allowing us to go back. There's no way back. We know that all of these natural disasters happening today are just some sort of warning for us to be able to slow down in terms of other types of energies. And for that reason, we know that renewable energies are one of the key components of the solution for us to be able to minimize this warming of this global 
situation and well renewable energies in Latin America is now also part of the understanding of this electric power markets and electric power systems through a broader penetration a much higher penetration in these electric power systems with variable sources this when I talk about generation power generation we know that some other markets have also anticipated these renewable energies and for that reason we do not see any sort of challenges of any kind when we see this type of circumstances we are just under the usual circumstances in some markets and electric power markets we have developed some procedures in countries and in let's say the most advanced systems in the country that allow just exponentially increase this variable energy in electric power systems without further requiring let's say investment in infrastructure of course we recognize that infrastructures are one of the main challenges that we have in Latin America because of the geographic characteristics of a region of course somehow require some sort of increase in terms of our infrastructures but this is not the solution it's not the silver bullet for all of this so we know that all of this somehow encompasses a very well-defined portfolio that is to be different and also upgradable including a wide range of solutions including let's say infrastructures and electric power transportation as well and not only in terms of this type of review that we're going to be doing in terms of this codes of let's say uh, for us to be able to run all of these electric power systems and also the proper functioning of these electric power markets for us to be able to just somehow meet the needs and adjust to the realities of this variable generation and this is a huge endeavor that we need to take for the coming years and for the other generations and this is how we have to do this because of a key part of this because technological development is core for us to be able to find the most suitable solutions for the actual situation and it is not possible for us to be able to find the solution without let's say further cooperation or participation from the public and private sectors our experience across European markets let's say of having all types of flexibility solutions is mainly somehow just trying to enable this cooperation and just fluent communication for us to be able to learn what is the progress in terms of science the industry so that uh, let's say lawmakers have the most updated information in terms of what is going on in this industry and so that they can just incorporate all of this to our laws in real time in terms of the economy and technology and also planning in the long run according to all of the systems and whatever and everything that we have so you all know that storage is one of the main challenges that we have a lot of initiatives across the regions a lot of efforts that are somehow starting to just really try to find new storage solutions and all of this is done just imminently we would like to also address the high opportunities that we find in terms of all of this electric power storage we have to continue exploring this for us to be able to incorporate regulatory and technical solutions for this electrical storage for us to be able to integrate let's say more significant points for this variable generation in Latin America and I would like just to just give you the example of Uruguay I don't want to extend anymore, but I want you to have an overall of how this virtual condition that we have to be on living has led us to re react. We thank you for joining us in Colombia Wind Power, and I wish you an excellent day and an excellent meeting during our sessions. First of all, I want to uh, greet Nelson Clark 
and all our attendees, all the sponsors and all our panel members or speakers. Ramon has already named them. And I thank you for joining a conference that Ramon was saying it is our third edition and that we have supported in the past the two previous ones. CER, Colombia, has been involved as a par direct partner for the organization of this third edition. We hope that we will deliver to you a full information debate that will be very useful for our industry. Undoubtedly, to talk about wind energy is to talk about a potential. It is an exercise that we are not yet seeing it in its real dimension because the effects have not yet been witnessed. But obviously, one year of preparation, of completing or moving forward or licensing procedures of previous consultation that are quite complex where we have intended to do is to reach reasonable agreements, fair, equitable, with the indigenous communities living in those regions for ages. We have to respect culture and cosmovision of this people, and it is necessary to take them into account in order to guarantee the sustainability of the projects that will be there for 30 or more years. That progress has been made, but under very difficult conditions. As we all understand, pandemia has brought about many consequences on human activity, and obviously this prior consultations where we need to know the opinion of those communities. We need to interview many people, and under these conditions, it has been nearly impossible. But in agreement with the government, we have been trying to look for mechanisms that will make possible this kind of uh, surveys by virtual meetings as we are doing today. That progress will certainly lead us to have in the first quarter next year to be able to bring in the wind equipment that will be installed in Guajira. That is a phenomenal challenge because of logistics on ports, on bridges, among others. The size is huge. It is not very easy to manipulate in the existing ports. We have the Cerrojón, Porturio, and it is a particular port that is to the service of all ages. But Cerrojón, is devoted only to carbon. The government aiming to support wind projects through the budget has enabled this port to be used to bring in and manage all the equipment that will be installed in Guajira. However, uh, the current conditions has made it difficult, and we don't have full operation of the port. So we hope that for the rest of the year, we are hoping that the announcement that has been made today, that the possibility that the strike will be over, then um, we will be able to move forward. Yes, we are uh, undergoing difficult times. However, we will be improving and we will be completely successfully on the projects on the day that has been established on the bidding processes that took place on the 
the contracts 2019 for short term and the long term as well. This projects, at least two of them, are aiming to have direct contracts of PPAs to execute them and complete at least 11 projects in the Guajira. So we hope to see them under construction by next year. It is a, quite a challenge and we see this optimistically. Obviously, we will be facing difficulties because in addition to logistic building, licensing that are still missing, we require the transmission lines. At least some require those lines, others are connected to existing transmission lines and those will have less difficulties to be set up, but the others have to be connected to the collection at the interior of the coast, and obviously we have to undergo all the surveys of previous consultations, um, and it is difficult under current conditions. We hope that this will not be delaying or making much more difficult the process to start operations. So all this topic lead us to conclude that Colombia is penetrating wind power uh, in its energy mix. So we hope to have a higher percentage of wind and the government has announced a new renewable energy bid for next year, aiming to the non-regulated market. Uh, there is space for these projects that will have a very important development percentage possibility to be connected before December 2022 that might be the date required by the government for this new bid. This is not only for wind, but also for solar farms. And that are good news for renewable energies in Colombia. So we are undergoing a huge transformation and we will be discussing all this topic during two, two days of conference, debate, discussion, and analysis that will for which we have experts from the government and industry, and we will be examining them in depth. Under that scenario, we will be holding this event. And as I was telling you at the beginning, yes, Colombia is supporting and participating directly. Uh, we hope that at the end, we will have a better knowledge, better elements, better rationals to know what is going on with these projects in Colombia and in the region. Not only we will be acquiring local information, but also international one, thanks to our speakers that will share with us their experiences abroad. We hope this event will be a great success, and I wish you a the best of meetings, and I want to thank all the attendees, GWEG for the organization, all the members of CER Colombia that have made all efforts to make this possible, and obviously to all of our sponsors that have supported us in this event. Thank you so much, and I wish you the best of success. Thank you, thank you, Herman. In several departments. Hi, good morning to all you. Thank you for the invitation and thank you for the organizer for having prepared this event. As Minas, 
we are pleased to participate in this uh, event in renewable energies. We see that Colombia has been making huge efforts in order to transport energy mix. It is now leading the way to non-conventional renewable energies. Wind has a huge uh, participation from now on. Uh, the wind power, not only at the Guajira area, but also in different departments, whereas the wind source is very important. There is a great opportunity in the country in order to renew itself with clean energy through wind power. Uh, uh, mix for energy grid. We believe uh, very strongly that all the purposes that have been stated in energy transformation going from the route that will lead Colombia to a solid and diverse energy and they will be obtaining a huge participation on the electric market. And that is why we are here. Climate change cannot be addressed only. It is a shared responsibility between government, society, and private companies, and can only be done with the collaboration at a long run. I believe that by joining this event, we all can face climate change, assuring that our collective efforts has a greater impact for the future of Colombia. The challenges that we are undergoing through uh, COVID-19 pandemic have to do with the recovery in all areas. Green recovery, a sustainable, will be sus reinforcing the objectives of the United Nations. Wind power is a leverage to achieve it, and the, this will lead us to correct economy worldwide. It will enable us to re, reshape energy sector, provide jobs, accessible energy, and economic recovery. Because of the success of previous years and the announcement of the new bid that will be taking place in January 2021, we agreed that this is a way to continue for, to have a green recovery. Uh, Non-conventional energy will be included in the grid uh, in, with the purpose that these objectives will be achieved to have uh, wind energy in the mix increased. This obviously will have an impact on power and that will have a generation of affordable prices that could even be perceived. All of this in addition to a much more transparent market and a standardized where PPAs will also become a part of these options in order to negotiate energy in such a way that we continue to in give incentives for all those farms to reduce risk that will account for a win-win of all the players in the sector. For us as technologies and manufacturers, the uptakers and developers, it is important to have the con right conditions so the projects can be executed on time and according to specifications. We need to align all the policies to comply with them. We also need to have the abilities of the ports uh, to import the generators and the ways so high, large size equipments can be transported. The construction of wind farms will bring a lot of benefits to the regions because we will be creating prosperity throughout those projects for the region. We are also improving talent, giving training and professionals that want to change the world. It is important to highlight that wind energy 
is compatible with the activities of house boundary that are, is developed in different areas and they can live together with harmony with the inhabitants of the region, their customs having a perfect balance between technology and nature. On the other hand, among the benefits of non-conventional re renewable energies, we have invest foreign investment for this project is giving stability to the country because it will be an interesting market to invest in, as well as the benefits on the short, middle, and long term. Investors, the value of energy for investors, renewable energies will be looking for it because of the social and environmental impact that it might have. Uh, we are walking on the right track, uh, improving and transforming its power grid. And yes, Siemens Gamesa Renewable Energies is there with a substantial presence on the grid. We have top class wind turbines that are created according to the types of winds and to the m Colombian market. So we are a great business partner in order to establish a wind park from its design all the way to its construction and operation. Not only in Latin America, but worldwide, the experience of working with Siemens Gamesa will be the right one in order to have wind farms. At the same time, we have to be precise and we have to be visionary. At the same time, we have to be practical. With the wind, we are also trying to balance the strength of what we can achieve today with the promise of what we'll be achieving in the future. We are committed to Colombia to make out of this way that we just started a long path where all players will be receiving the benefit, not only for clean energies, for now and the future, but a country that will be transforming itself with social, economic, and environmental development to the future. The power, uh, we are still exploring the power. All of us must be feeling proud of writing this new history. Um, congratulations, Colombia. Um, uh, please stay with us on the stage because the first panel is um, about to begin. Many thanks. <laughs> 